any healthy ecosystem out there in the world survive and thrive because of fungi doing loads of fundamental work. They're everywhere involved in everything and they're all doing it really quiet and they get none of the praise for doing so. They're way more important than plants. We are inside the Fungarium at Kew and it's actually the largest collection of fungi in the world. We currently have just over 1.1 million specimens. We have every country on earth represented and we have, we think, something like 60% of the genera that have been scientifically described represented here in the collection too. We do have a, a small collection here which is historically quite important. We have some specimens collected by Charles Darwin when he was on the Beagle voyage and we have a subsample from Alexander Fleming's original discovery of penicillium. It doesn't look like much but this changed the world. It's this fungus that we get, penicillin, and all modern antibiotics. So this little fungus and its relatives have probably saved hundreds of millions of lives and changed the face of human life and history since the 1920s. The oldest specimen we think is from the early 1700s. So it's at least, we think maybe 300 years old. Um, the most modern specimen, we made a collection last week of a type of fungus which lives parasitically on ladybirds. It's a really cute little thing called Hesperomyces. So we found some in the gardens and that's now going to make its way into the collection. So it's, you know, really right up to date. Fungi are a bit tricky to study. They are quite challenging because they are dry collections and very, very old collections, very historical, almost ancient. We have um, species that look alike. They, they are, can be almost identical. But when you sequence their DNA, their genetic code, you realize that they are completely unrelated and the other way around. Things that can be very, very different, they actually may be sisters. They can be very closely related when you look at their DNA. And with the Fungarium Sequencing Project, what we are trying to do is develop methods that allow us to extract DNA from very, very tiny samples to understand better the relationship between them and also to identify new species. We decided to target the most, most precious uh, specimens in the collection, which are the type specimens. They are the physical specimen that was used when a species was described for the first time. And we have about 50,000 of them. Our hope is to get all the type specimens sequenced at genome level, and these are fungi that may be only in this collection. So our hope is that we will accelerate species identification and can be used as a reference for the samples that people may be collecting outside. We have a fantastic group of samplers that go around the collection, opening boxes and looking for uh, those type specimens and sampling them. You may find surprises, you may find specimens that might not be real types, you may find specimens that actually are not physical fungi. Uh, they have beautiful drawings, but you cannot sequence uh, a picture, right? And there's a lot of taxonomists that do all the investigation and detective work to find out if the collection that we have here is the real, real original sample that was used to describe the species. Here is a specimen called Carina pazisa inonata. So I'm just taking one of the pieces that are in this, and then I'll take a sample from this. So there's a surprising amount of material on here. We try to minimize getting the substrate that it's on so that we have like the, the mo most clean piece of DNA we can get. So I'm literally just taking um, individual apothecia from the substrate uh, and then I'm going to put them in a pile and then I'll put them into the tube um, when I feel like I've got enough. And then we attach a sampling label to say that it has been sampled for the Fundarium Sequencing Project. The little problem we found when we started the project is that the, the collection wasn't data-based. So we didn't know where those 50,000 type specimens may be hidden inside the, the green boxes. Luckily, this is being tackled. We have another project, a um, digitization project, that is databasing all our specimens here at Kew.
The big thing for us is that it finally means that we know what we have in the collection, we know where it's all from, and we have all of the data that we have locked away down here in this, in this fungarium is going to be available for everyone to use all over the world. What was it growing on? What was it growing under? What colour was it? What smell was it? The data that we have associated with the specimen is as important as the specimen itself. And that allows us to look at how the distribution of species has changed. It allows us to look at how a species has changed because we can look at a, you know, a particular species from a particular area 150 years ago or last year. We can look at the genomes, we can look at how they're impacted by climate change or habitat loss. And by having it all databased, all of the data available, there's going to be a whole new swathe of scientists or humanities researchers interested in the data part of it. The bit that we kind of don't think of always as important and it's going to completely explode how this collection is used. We are quite excited now because after one year we have uh, managed to sequence our first 1,000 specimens. We have been finding, for example, one of our type specimens is the original uh, collection that was used when the shiitake uh, mushroom was, was described. We have collections from Darwin, we have collections from uh, Linnaeus uh, Son. We can go beyond simple species identification. We can do what's called comparative genomics. We can compare the genomes of all those fungal specimens and look for their genes and for the, the properties. And we can research further on the diversity of compounds that they can produce. And we already know that some of those compounds may have antibiotic properties. The fungus called penicillium was the original uh, organism that produced uh, penicillin, right? But I'm pretty certain that there are other compounds that nobody has found yet. And, and we hope that by looking into these hidden specimens in, in this collection, we may find new genes and new functions that may be useful. We can sequence everything and we can understand the fundamentals of what makes fungi fungi and how they live and behave. And all of that we could potentially use for humans, whether it's pharmaceutical drugs, novel enzymes that we can use. Um, there's 101, 1,001 applications in a collection like this. And it's never dead, it's, sta it's, it's growing constantly. It has increasing number of uses as our technology develops. And it's only gonna keep being used more and more by a more diverse kind of person and researcher. Um, as we go through the next years.